We just threw a bunch of terms around like libvert, QEMU, and KVM, and we thought maybe a little bit of groundwork would be a good idea. So let's start with libvert. Libvert itself is basically an abstraction layer or an API in between the user or even some certain automation platforms in between that and the virtualization backend. If you go to libvert.org, you'll see there's actually a lot more backends for libvert than I thought there were. I knew of KVM and Zen, of course, Scott mentioned earlier, Zen was a predecessor in RHEL, I think five, you could use Zen to do this like power virtual virtualization of Linux on Linux, right? And it was hard to do guests that were not, because it wasn't a fully virtual environment. You couldn't do guests that were like Windows, for example. So if you wanted to do stuff like that, you needed a different hypervisor. And that's where kind of QEMU and KVM came along. QEMU, I mentioned earlier. So one more thing on libvert, that API is more than just those verse commands that I showed you, although that is one interface to uh, libvert. It actually does expose an API that you can interact with through something like Ansible, for example, or the virtualization platform that Red Hat offered up until recently. That was all in the background. It was libvert. And there was a web UI that would talk to libvert through calls to the libvert API. So there's, and there's lots of things that will do that, right? So, and the thing is that in the background, you can do, it abstracts the actual virtualization layer, right? So that's really handy. I like that feature about libvert. So those commands that you're familiar with and the way you interact with it doesn't change based on what the backend is. The next thing was QEMU. QEMU, I've heard people pronounce it as QEMU. Q, QEMU, like I'm pronouncing it, Quemu. I don't know what the right pronunciation is. Like so many things on Linux, maybe we'll never know. But QEMU is the actual virtualization backend. It is a hypervisor that interacts with the KVM backend, which is the kernel virtual machine, which we'll talk about in a second, that actually lets you do the virtualization piece, right? All of the configuration that we define in libvirt gets passed into QEMU, which then leverages KVM to run a VM. So the last term that I've thrown around a whole bunch, and I've already mentioned what it is, KVM. This is the kernel virtual machine. And there are, by the way, links for all these things. Um, because we don't have Eric in the background, we haven't been great about sharing the links, but they'll be in the description of the video in the notes here. But KVM is, like I said, kernel virtual machine. These are actual pieces of code and extensions within the kernel that enable virtualization. Right, So this is basically how Q QEMU is able to run VMs on Linux. So there you go. You're now experts on how virtualization works on Linux, right? So this, all these pieces together can turn Linux into a hypervisor, which is pretty awesome.